Yo, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you all the settings I use to play League of Legends. One of the most common questions I get on my stream is, what settings do I use? What DPI do I use? That being said, settings are super important in competitive games and many times can even give you the upper hand. So I'm going to be breaking down every setting that I use, why I use them, and what settings I believe you should and or shouldn't use. I'm live every single day at twitch.tv slash catevolved. See you guys there. I play on 3200 DPI. I used to play on lower, like around 800 when I first started playing League of Legends, then 1300, maybe a year later. And I've slowly increased my DPI over the years to 3200. And that may seem very fast to a lot of people, especially if you mainly play FPS games, you're used to around 800 or 1000 DPI. I believe that's the standard. With League of Legends, DPI doesn't really matter. There's a lot of high level players that use high DPI. I believe like Faker and Caps, uh, those kind of players, but DPI doesn't really matter. I know some players in League of Legends, pro players as well, that go like 800 DPI, 400 DPI. It doesn't matter too much. So yeah, I play on 3200 DPI with 50 mouse sensitivity in game, which is the default. You can have whatever DPI you want, doesn't really matter. It's just up to you at the end of the day. Personally, I enjoy having higher DPI, but to each their own. Hockeys, everything on quick cast. A lot of people play on normal cast for some reason. I wouldn't recommend it. I think you should always play on quick cast. One thing to note though, is that it is fine to have some things on manual cast. You play some other champions, it is factually better to have an ability on manual cast than on quick cast. For example, champions that require you to hold down an ability. So if you're playing Vladimir, Vladimir is the best example I can give you. If you play Vladimir, it's probably better to put your E on manual cast. That way, instead of holding down E when you're comboing, you can just hit your E one time to make it channel, and then you can hit E again to release it. That way it's easier to combo, you know, if you go like E, W, and then like Q, R afterwards, right? Another example would be like maybe Victor, Rumble Ulti, Xerath Q, Varus Q, up to you really. Just like play around with it. If manual cast is easier for you, then go with manual cast. If not, then don't. But for the most part, quick cast is just superior. All my keybinds are fairly standard. Q, W, E, R, D, F, of course, and then all of all these just very standard. If you go default, this is what it is. This is what I was talking about as well. Normal cast is fine for a lot of abilities. You can also have your normal cast set to other keybinds. Sometimes you want to see your ability range. So Katarina isn't really a good example because like the only thing you would maybe use quick uh, normal cast for is your E to see the range, but I don't think you need to. There's a lot of champions where having at least a normal cast bind to go to can be beneficial for you. So that's what I have mouse button 5, mouse button 4 for. Hands off the keyboard, look at my mouse. Look. Boom. Mouse button. Q activated, normal cast. All right, you can do that. It's more beneficial on champs like LeBlanc. You know, this is spell two is your W. So if I'm playing LeBlanc, mouse button four, I can see my LeBlanc W range, right? That way I can one-shot the wave a little bit easier with WR. So it can be beneficial to have your normal cast binded to a different set of keys as well. I know a lot of pro players have shift plus the key instead. You can click on this and set the bind and do shift plus E, right? And if you go, if you hold shift and then hit E, you'll have normal cast E. Everything here is fairly standard. Now self cast. The reason why I don't have shift as my normal cast, my manual cast, is because I have shift as my self cast. If you don't know what self cast is, champions that cast shields or heals or other abilities like that. So Zillion ulti, Lissandra ulti. It's very good to have self cast binded onto something. So in my case, I have shift plus the ability. So if I'm playing Zillion and I have to ult myself, then shift R is what I do, right? If I'm playing Janna, Shift E, shield myself. Very, very useful. This stuff is very standard. I think normally your ability level up is on control. This is something that you really want to get into the habit of doing. When you level up, there's a lot of players out there that will just like move their cursor down here and level it up. That's not good. You want to have a binding, so control W, level my W there. You want to get used to that kind of key binding. So in very clutch scenarios, leveling your ability can make the difference. I've seen a lot of high elo players even pro players, challenger players, they lose fights because they don't level their ability fast enough. I'm sure you've seen it in highlight channels and other videos where someone's battling and they have like a skill point available for their Q and they're using their Q multiple times, but they haven't leveled it up. Probably because they don't have the habit of using control Q fast enough. Good thing to get in the habit of doing. Maybe you can bind it to something else, but yeah, I have control plus every ability for the level up. And something that a lot of people ask on my stream, constantly almost, spacebar. A lot of people play on unlocked screen, and then they have spacebar as their center camera. So they'll hit spacebar and then the camera will center onto them. In my case, I play with toggle camera lock essentially. And I don't have a center key except for F1, which I never use. So I play like this. When you hear my, in my videos and everything, um, my streams, where I'm spamming a key when I'm moving, that's because I'm unlocking and locking my camera permanently. 
right? That's the key you hear. That's how I play. I just lock and unlock my camera using the Y key. And because spacebar isn't on my center, it is on my target champions only. Now, this is a, a setting in League of Legends that you should be using all the time. It's very good to get in the habit of doing. It can be useful not only just for tower diving or fighting objectives. Like, for example, look, my curse is over it. Now I hold down my spacebar for target champs only. I can no longer target the dragon, which allows me to click inside of the dragon. Same thing with jungle camps as well, like scuttle. I can, like, click on the scuttle. Now, same thing with grump. So the reason why I first changed it to spacebar for my target champs only was because I was very into playing Yasuo at the time. Now there's a cool thing with Yasuo, I'm per pretty sure you guys have always seen wall dashes. Now the way you do that on Yasuo, for example, you walk next to a camp, holding down target champs only, and you're able to click into the camp. Whereas normally, you can't. I can't click. I can't go anywhere. I can click maybe here, sure, but we want to be right in front of the camp. So we hold down target champs only, that way we can't target it, and we just click into it. Spacebar for target champs only. Very useful for tower diving as well, because you can't target towers if you're holding it down. Like I said, objectives, camps, everything. Maybe you're fighting in a minion wave. This will prevent you from misclicking an ability or an auto attack on minions or anything else, right? I've seen a lot of high level players mess up tower dives because they accidentally auto attack the tower. And they don't use target champs only, but you should get in the habit of this. You can have it on any other key. I think the default key is the tilde key. If you don't know what that is, it's right next to your one on your mouse pad to the left, right above tab. You can change it. Like I said, mine's on spacebar. You can find a toggle for it as well. If you don't want to just hold it down. I like to hold it down because it's easier. B is base, obviously. Like I said, we already went over our level up. Now let's move on to items. Everything here is very default. I don't even have um, manual cast set up for this. I know there's a lot of people that like to see the ward range. Personally, I, I know the ward range a lot of the time, and if I don't, I just click on it. You should have your wards on quick cast always. Just hit four or whatever your keybind is. This is how it works with a bush. If you are hovering a ward over a bush, it will light up a green circle. That means it's in the bush. If it's not in the bu if it's not lit up, it's on the bush, right? We're on player movement now. Player move click is your your walking, of course, right? You click around, mouse button two. For me, this can be different for you based on your keybinds. But you know how I was saying earlier, my self-cast is shift plus the ability? If I don't have this binded at times, it can be very annoying. And the reason for that is, the way it's defaulted initially, this isn't set to anything else, right? So what will happen is if you're holding down shift, it counts as like attack move sometimes. So since I have shift as my self-cast, when I was self-casting and clicking, because I'm self-casting while clicking, right? Because I'm still playing the game. Sometimes I'll hold shift, and then click around and it would um it would force me to auto attack because it would be like my my attack move key it's a weird default thing so that's why i changed it to this so now i have shift mouse button 2 as my player move flick as well just so i don't have that like weird interaction with my keybinds that way when i hold down shift and mouse button 2 if i hold down shift and i'm clicking i mean i don't have a uh, attack move going off player attack move click and player attack only click player attack move is this so if I hold down the A key, or click A key rather, A or X, I can use either one because I've set one and set two. If I hit A or X, it shows my attack range, first of all, right? No matter what champ you're playing, it shows your attack range. And then on top of that, you can just click and it'll attack the nearest enemy. Attack move up here. Look, I'm auto attacking it. This is how pro ADC players kite. They're able to attack move. And this is basically just useful because... It'll prevent you from misclicking. I'll use the same example I heard when I was a lower level player when I first started playing League of Legends. I played ADC. A lot of time, you'll see someone kiting. Now, attack move is just used to prevent misclicks because if you're kiting, that if you're kiting without attack move, you're moving your mouse like this. And there's a high chance that when you're clicking forward to space, you click forward, auto attack, click back, run away, right? And so on, repeat over and over. Sometimes you might not click on the enemy champion, you might click next to them, which will then force you to walk towards them, which can change the entire outcome of a game sometimes. So it's useful to get in the habit of using player attack move. Pretty much just a way to uh, attack an enemy nearby without misclicking. Hit A, and then you left click anywhere, and you will hit the nearest thing. Player stop position. This can be useful at times. I would say it's useful a lot of the time. I think S is the default key. It just stops you from moving. So look, I'm going to click up here. Now I hit the S key. I stop moving. It's as simple as that. It can be useful at times, especially maybe if you're doing like the wall hop stuff, like I said, with target champs only. If you're getting closer, you can like spam S key. 
right? Move, pet click. I've never changed this, but this would be useful if you're playing Annie or Ivern, something like that with a pet. Now let's move on to camera control. Everything here is very standard, except like I said, my camera lock. Camera lock is on Y for me, like I said. No center of camera on champion, but F keys are very normal here. F1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You see me use this all the time. It's the Faker thing. You ever watch Faker's stream? You know how he's spamming F keys going from uh, ally to ally? And then people are like, oh, I'm gonna have a seizure. This guy's spamming F keys. Yeah, that's that's what this is. I use it all the time. I try not to on oh, my stream, my YouTube videos. But when I was playing pro, I used it all the time. It's useful for just seeing if, see what's happening in your teammates' POVs. It's more of a higher level player thing. Like if you're lower, you're lower, like don't, don't. This is worthless if you're not like challenger, in my opinion. I don't think you care to see what your teammates are doing. Just move your camera to them. It takes too long to get good at this. And it's like a very low reward. It's more of a thing to learn if you're already like a really good player. And yeah, jungle. Yeah, it's good, uh, good for jungle, I guess, as well. Take camp, you're like clearing camps, and then you hit F3, you look at your top lane or whatever, you have it binded to. Scroll up, down, left. I never use this, but this just means if your camera's unlocked, you can use your arrow keys and move your camera like this. Like I said, I never use this. Never. I never have. It's so worthless. That means you're taking your hand off your mouse to use this. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? What, like, what's the point? Drag scroll. It's just, just zooming in and out. So I don't. Display. Yeah, I don't have anything binding here really. Control F just shows your FPS and your ping at the top right. So if for some reason you don't want to see that, I don't know why. Maybe you feel ashamed of having low FPS and high ping. You can just hide it with Control F. Cool. Personally, I have mine on all the time. Now I got my pings. I think all my pings are, are default. Areas warded might be the only one that's not default. So obviously each ping, you can see like one like retreat ping is binding to V, for example, and alert ping bind to G, so alert is like this, uh, that's that, with V. You, you don't really have to individually bind any of these ones, because you can just use the wheel instead. G, V, alt is also another one, which I never use, but, you know, if it's closer to your fingers, then it's, if it's comfier for you, then use alt, right? Here one, I use G and V. Arrow is warded, I believe this is default for H, you just hit H, nice. Arrow is warded, guys, there's a ward here, cool. Next, we got all the uh, taunts, mastery modes, whatever, who cares. Chat history, Z, just shows all the chat history. Useful if your teammates are timing summoner spells or maybe your teammates ping the summoner spell. And now you hold down Z and you just scroll up to C. You can time it, time it yourself. Open emote wheel. So guys, you see me spam emotes all the time. Yo, Kenny Vol, why do you spam emotes? What's wrong with you? Why are you BMing your enemies? You're so mean, you're so rude, you're toxic. I do it out of habit. I just spam T, okay? This opens your emote wheel, so once again, you can hold down T. Got your emote wheel here. For me, I usually don't open my emote wheel. If you see me open my emote wheel, that means I'm actually using emotes. A lot of time, I'm just spamming T and left clicking, which means I'm using this one. That's what I'm doing. It's just out of habit, okay? Sometimes I disable it. Don't have any binds for here. Menu, everything is very, very standard here. I don't think I've ever changed anything from this. Just scoreboard tab. O. o opens it permanently until you hit O again, but tab is like you, it goes away after you release it. That's usually better to use. Advanced stats are these, hold down C so I can show everything. Item shop, P for your shop. That's all my hotkeys. Now I'll go over my video settings. Yo, can Blue Boss shut off, bro? All right, now video settings. This is probably what matters the most for a lot of people, whether you have like a high-end PC or not. Yeah, standard, so 1920 by 1080, of course. I play on borderless mode. If you are a streamer or like YouTube or whatever, this is probably better because anyone that knows like streaming or YouTube, a lot of the time you have to alt tab to go out. Like maybe I have to open my Twitch chat to ban someone or maybe I have to go to Spotify to change my song. If I'm on full screen mode, what will happen is it takes like an extra few seconds to alt tab out and then tab back in. It can also mess up your OBS, like whatever your software you're using for streaming. It's just annoying. So usually you play on borderless, of course, Borderless will give you less FPS, so if that is a problem, if your PC is not good enough, then full screen is probably where it's at. But in terms of streaming and YouTube, whatever, OBS, if you do that, Borderless is probably the way to go. I play on colorblind mode. I'm a little bit colorblind, not really, but a little bit. I've always used colorblind mode for every game I've ever played, even Call of Duty back when I was like 10. Relative team colors, this just means whatever side you're on is gonna be blue side. But if I turn it off, for example, if I was on red side this game and I turn this off, then this would still show red instead of blue. Hide eye candy. This one can help your frames a little bit. 
It's the description. Disable ambient critters and effects. This means like the squirrels and the, the random little things that might pop up. Birds and stuff, I don't know. Like this guy? I think this is a, a eye candy, okay? A little lizard? Let's turn him off. Oh, nope, he's just there anyways. Okay, well, I don't know. I have this off just because it helps FPS. Now, when I go to my performance settings here, everything's on custom. Sometimes I swap between medium for all of these and low. I can't really tell the difference, but I just personally don't like high or very high or anything. I have shadows off completely because, I mean, it's like, they're just annoying to have. Like, look. Like, dude, I, why, why would you want shadows, man? Just easier to, to tell exactly what's going on in the game. FPS cap, I just have it at 240 because 240 hertz monitor, so that's that. Don't think you need either one of these on. I think it affects performance negatively at times. Yeah, look, this may lower performance and this may affect the image stability at the cost of performance. Okay, cool. And now my color levels. A lot of people always ask me, how do I get my game so bright? I have the game at 81, okay? That's all. Default is 50, so this is the normal lighting. I have it at 80, but you can't really get 80, so I get 81. That's that. Very cool. Makes it a little bit brighter. My monitor is slightly darker, so I have my game brighter, so maybe it's a little bit brighter for you guys than it is for me, but that's what I have it on. Everything else here is default, 50, 50, 50. This one's the only one I changed. And that is it for video settings. Now let's go to sound. I think this is just based on like your reference. I don't have music on. That's that interface. This stuff, I don't know. Everything's kind of like weirdish and like changed a bit. So I don't, I have HUD on 75. Everything else is just like randomized, dude. Cursor scale 50. Yeah, if you want a bigger mini map, if you have a trouble, if you have trouble looking at your map, this is the setting for you. Personally, I don't, so keep it there. You can choose a legacy cursor if you want. I have the new cursor. Personally, I don't really care, so I'd use this one. Now this, is where it gets really important. In my opinion, this is whatever for you, but you should always show spell costs, dude. Always show spell costs, please. Always show spell costs. I'm playing Katarina, so I don't have mana, so I can't show you the example. But when this is on, and you're playing a mana champion or energy champion, it will show the number on the ability. The amount of times I've seen one trick players, just players in general, dude, they don't know their mana at times. They don't know their mana costs. Some people will be playing Akali, and her rank 1 Q is 130 energy, and she has 200 energy, and they, they don't have spell costs on, and they're spamming Q when they only have 100 energy. It's like, bro, turn on spell costs, see that your Q is 130, and wait 30 energy, and you can use your Q. Always. Use show spell costs. It is so beneficial. What else we got here? This is whatever, preference, preference. You should have all these on, always. I think the default is having experience off and gold off or something, but you should always have these on. All these are so good. It shows you everything, like just have them all on. There's no reason to not have them all on. And that's it for that, for interface. Now let's move on to game. This is once again, like pretty much all preference. I would say mouse speed, everything up here is preference, right? Turn this off, in my opinion. Turn off move camera on revive. This can be so, so annoying, dude. If you have this on, your camera moves when you revive. So if you're playing a champion that has teleport, let me give you a scenario. Let's say you're playing a Kali with Ignite TP or Katarina with Ignite TP. A dragon fight for Elder is happening. You're currently dead. You're spawning in five seconds. You're spam pinging your TP. You're about to TP to the fight, right? Your camera's on the dragon. You respawn. Now your camera moves here. The ward you were looking at, you no longer see because your camera moved to the base. Turn this off. It will win you games single-handedly. Turn this off, always. Auto attack. This thing is troll too. Turn off auto attack, please. If you have auto attack on, you'll just attack things that are near you. Look, so currently I have auto attack off, so I get to play the game. I have a mind of my own. I'm not a bot. I have a mind of my own. I can walk around this dummy without hitting it. Look. Wow, look, I'm a free man. Auto attack is on. Okay, minions are spawning. Look. Look! My, my champion is- Look, it's auto attacking for no reason. It can mess you up at times. Look. Autoing minions, not good. This can really mess you up at times if you're freezing a wave. Sometimes you just auto a minion. You don't want to. It's bad. Turn this off. Have this off at all times, please. It's useless. Movement prediction. Personally, I don't ever see the point using this. It says under slow network conditions, increase perceived responsiveness of your champion's movement. This just looks very weird. The way the description is written, it makes you think that this would be beneficial if you have high ping. Now the problem is that's just not the case. <laughs> your champion just lags. So look. This is me on 48 ping, just walking around normally, right? Maybe I'm moving back and forth. Cool. I'm like tethering in lane, Orianna's about to cue me, right? I'm tethering. Now this is with movement prediction on. 
What is this? Whoa, I'm jumping around! 48 ping! I'm tethering! I can't even tell where my champion is at times! Whoa! This is on 48 ping. Imagine if you're on 100. Bro, you teleport, literally. Turn, like, have this off. It's so useless. Attack move on cursor. Attack move will prioritize the target closest to your mouse click. When it's enabled, if it's disabled, attack move will prioritize the, cl the target closest to your champion. Currently, it's enabled, so be closest to my mouse click. So I'm gonna attack move up here, and I auto attack this dummy, which is what I want, right? I turn this off, right same spot. I wanna, I wanna hit this target, but now I'm hitting this. This is honestly based on preference and maybe even the position you play. Having this disabled might be beneficial if you're playing an ADC and you are kiting people, because they're always gonna be closer to you and you're kiting backwards and you wanna hit the closest target. But once again, it's preference, maybe dabble around with it. But I think in general, for the most part, attack move on a lot of characters in League of Legends, having it enabled is better. The last setting to go over, this is the target champs only, the toggle, like I was talking about. Okay? If you want it as a toggle, you know, like I said, my space bar is my target champs only. I hold it down, that way I, I don't like misclick, right? I can't click on the plant because I'm holding it down. Now I can because I released it. But you can put it as a toggle instead. And I know I click spacebar one time and now it's perma on. This can be very annoying, at least for me. Maybe if you get into the habit of knowing it's a toggle, it won't be annoying. But for me, it's annoying because you have to hit it one time. To, like, it's just annoying. But I have that off. All right, that was the rundown of all my settings. I like to remind you guys not to just fully copy and paste my settings, thinking that would be the best option for you. Probably not going to be as good as me. I solo killed Faker. I'm rank one in North America. And that being said, settings are mainly preference. So try out some of the settings that I showed you. See what works for you. If it doesn't, then that's fine. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed and let me know what your DPI is in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Peace.